friends the deputy was fishing with say the incident happened at 1.30 this morning. They're saying the man was standing at the front of the boat and fell into the lake. He was not wearing a life vest. The crime scene tape behind me says it all. Extensive property damage done to this very popular playground. Arson investigators are telling us the damage loss is about $250,000. As you can see behind me, investigators are still trying to gather some more evidence from yesterday's shooting. Buckley Avenue, where the shooting took place, is closed off. At this time, they are not releasing the name of the victim, but they will say that they have a suspect in custody. Texas has lost more officers than any other state. In 2015 alone, 12 Texas officers died, six alone in Bell County. Firefighters from different cities arrived on scene to contain the fire. They say it all started when a fan caught on fire, then some mattresses eventually leading to the boat. Temple High School prides themselves in their athletic program, but who are the ones that prepare those athletes for their games and meets? Let's meet the team behind the team. Bell County voting officials do confirm they ran out of ballots for both the Republican and the Democratic Party. However, they say they stayed up till 6 a.m. counting every single ballot. Jarrell Freeman is a linebacker for the Chicago Bears, formerly played for the Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts. But before all that, he started his path right here playing four years of collegiate football for the UMHB Crusaders. That's when he was named D3Football.com's Defensive Player of the Year. Belton ISD say they're excited for the new food truck and it's expected to open in the next school year. Early voting did start today for both McLennan and Bell County. Now voting administrators are telling us they've seen an increase in the people lining up to vote. Coach Stewart tells us this isn't about himself or the new position, but instead getting everyone together to work better as a team. Neighbors tell us the interaction they get out here with their community is what keep their neighborhood safe. Police responded to a woman shot in the face, another man shot in the hand, and two other drive-by shootings overnight in Killeen. That is not indicative of what, what happens in Killeen every night. This, I don't know if it was a full moon or what, but we just had a lot of things happen all around the same time. Police say it started right after midnight Wednesday morning when officers were called to William Met Drive to a house being shot from the inside of someone's vehicle. The driver sped off following the shooting and nobody was hurt. Then moments later across town, officers responded to the Western Oaks apartment complex on North 38th Street where they found a woman shot in the face. The 18-year-old is in stable condition at an area hospital. Police say the shooting happened at 1 in the morning in the parking lot of the complex. That's when the woman was walking toward Clinkin Beer Drive. This is the location of one of today's drive-by shootings. Colleen police say they responded to a call on Emily Lane. Nobody was injured, but property was damaged. Just minutes after that shooting, police were dispatched to Roy Reynolds Drive where a man had been shot in the hand. He was taken to a Seton Hospital for treatment. You know, he says he was walking around and going up to a residence and all of a sudden shots were fired. Um, we're still investigating that one because, you know, there's got to be more to that than somebody just walking up and getting their hand shot. Colleen police say they do not believe the incidents were related but are still investigating. In Colleen, Sydney Hernandez, Fox 44 News at 9. Drunk and disorderly conduct is something officers often deal with, but a drunken soldier stealing an ambulance and leading them on a wild chase isn't something that happens every day. Everybody was shocked, everybody was surprised, but when you have somebody with an altered mental state because of alcohol and their attention and their focus, things can happen. A bizarre car accident happened 4 a.m. Tuesday morning after police say a man originally intended on stealing a Harker Heights police car but stole an ambulance instead. Police say it all started when they got a call about a man passed out inside a vehicle. When officers arrived, Taylor Patterson was placed in handcuffs in the back of a patrol vehicle for public intoxication. Placed into the back of a vehicle, he was both handcuffed and seat belted in. He was somehow able to defeat both the seat belt and get his handcuffs to the front, wherein he proceeded to force open the locked screen that separates both the prisoner and the officers. But at some point, Patterson slipped through his seatbelt, pulled the handcuffs from the back over to the front, and discharged a shotgun that was in the unit. That's when police say he left the police car and jumped into a nearby parked ambulance, leading police down a wild chase down Highway 190. Police say Patterson was talking to them through police scanners he found inside the ambulance during the chase. The man said he was a special forces soldier for the Army and had weapons on him. The chase ended on Highway 190 near Simmons Street when the man eventually lost control of the ambulance and crashed into a light pole. 
No one was hurt, and Patterson was taken into custody facing possible felony charges. Patterson is stationed at Fort Hood in the 1st Air Cavalry Division. In Harker Heights, Sydney Hernandez, Fox 44 News at 9.